with Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Wednesday, April 14th, and the year is 2021. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Whether this is your first time joining me here or you're a returning person to my channel, I am so glad that you're here with me. Thank you for watching. I am super excited about not only the card I'm demonstrating for you tonight, which is a tent fold. It is a fun fold, but it's super easy. I've seen tent cards before, and I've tweaked the dimensions for the score lines to give you a better posture for this card. So not only is it going to fit in a regular A2 medium size envelope, it's going to stand up to great, great presentation. You're going to love it. I have six other cards that I'm going to share with you tonight, all using the same bundle of products. And I think you're going to fall in love with it just like I have. The versatility is amazing. Now, before we get started, I wanna go over a couple things with you. The first is you're gonna be able to find a link down below the video title in the video description when the live stream is over. That link is about halfway down, and if you click on it, it will navigate you over to my website. There you're gonna be able to scroll through the post and you'll see a red bar that says, download card measurements and supplies. Guess what? I gave you a PDF tutorial with all the cutting dimensions, all the scoring, and a whole list of supplies to make this super easy for you. I don't want you to have to hunt and peck for it so that you can recreate this tent cart at home. In addition to that, a couple other housekeeping items I want to point out is I love to chat with you. And even though I can't chat with you too well during the live stream because I'm busy stamping and that's what you came here for, I come back and I read every single comment. So to chat with us, whether you're watching the replay or you are here for the live stream, you're gonna need to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That is a requirement of YouTube, not of Lisa Stamp Studio. So please interact with us and the other people that are here during the live stream and the other comments. We'd love to hear from you. Then last but not least, I want to introduce you to Megan. You're going to see Megan's name here in blue with a wrench. Megan is my personal assistant and moderator here on YouTube and a wonderful friend. She is very much a real person. We get asked that all the time. We are separated by about 800 miles, but Megan's job is to help answer your questions during the live stream provide those links and be able to direct you to those things that you're looking for. So I think we're ready. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on tonight's Fun Fold tent card. Give me a second. I'm going to turn the camera down and I'll get you all zoomed in. Here we go. Don't forget to share tonight's video with your crafting friends. Sharing the video is like the biggest compliment you can pay me. I have changed the background tonight and I'm going to straighten you guys out. We are working on a new tripod system here and a new background, so I'm bear with me. I'm hoping that you're gonna like the white a lot better than the black, because apparently you guys didn't like that one last week. Let's go ahead and start with the card base for this fun fold. This is four and a quarter by 11. There's nothing fancy about the actual base of the card itself. I did score it in half before you joined me at four and, I'm sorry, at five and a half. I lost my mind there for a second. And I'm gonna bring in my favorite little tool here, my bone folder for a nice crisp crease. That eventually is going to be very important when we get to the card itself. Now we're gonna do the tent portion of this card after we do the front. And that's very, very important because you're gonna to wanna to do the stamping while everything is nice and flat. And I've got a little twist on this I'm gonna share with you. Now, since I want to do some stamping in the background here, I decided I needed to cover that work surface with a little bit of grid paper. Now these small grid papers, along with all the other products that I'm using tonight, are all available in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. And you are gonna be able to click there at the shop button and right next to it are all the reward information as well. I'm gonna be doing some stamping with the crumb cake ink and I'm gonna have that just off to the side here. Now I'm gonna show you the stamp set that I'm using. Actually, I'm using the whole bundle, which is the stamp set and the coordinating dies. And it's called Welcoming Window. And you'll see that there's dies here. I've got quite a few pulled out. This, if you think, is just a window, hang on, wait till you see the other cards I'm going to share with you. I had so much fun with this, and I think you are going to be too. I want to create a very subtle background here to add some precedence to what I'm going to create. And I decided I wanted the ink to be a little bit lighter than the way it comes off the ink pad. So I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to do what's called a stamp off to reduce that shade. I'm going to put the first one up here. Because I want this to look more like a wallpaper designer series paper background, I am actually going to vary this 
so that some of the images are actually on the paper and some are off of the paper. I'm stamping off every single time just to make sure that I have consistency. And then we're gonna do that one more time. And you're gonna see I didn't go crazy by filling it in too, too much. And of course you can always adjust that if you'd like. I do have my stamp and scrub right off camera and that's how I prefer to clean my stamps. I'm gonna go ahead and then just close up that ink pad for now. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna create actually a window on this. And I know you're thinking, yes, I know, it's called welcoming window. No, it goes with the tent card. And this is the beauty of this fold. So I'm gonna give you a couple ideas on what you can do with it. So I'm grabbing the dies that came from that bundle I just showcased for you. I'm gonna go ahead and move that paper off to the side and I'm gonna open this up nice and flat so you can see it. This is the window die that comes with that bundle. Now I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna to wanna to buy things as a bundle if you can, because bundles are going to save you 10% on the overall price. And I don't know about you, but I love saving money. This bundle of products is going to be available in the brand new catalog that comes out on May 4th, but not as a bundle. So if you're falling in love with it like I am, make sure you grab it now while it's reduced at the 10% savings as a bundle. I find I don't want this to shift on my die cutting platform. So I like to use this. And if you haven't seen me use it yet, this post-it note labeling and cover-up tape is amazing. I find that it doesn't mar my paper. It keeps everything nice and stable. I'm gonna move this up towards the top a little bit. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here because we're gonna do some more fun things. And I'm gonna go right across the die and I'm gonna tack that onto the cardstock. I am not gonna bring the die cutting machine in just to save space, but then I would just run this through my die cutting machine. And this is the magic of Alive is that, hello, there we go, it's already done for you. So I'm gonna set that off to the side so I don't lose that die. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to finish creating the element here for the inside of this tent card. I decided I wanted this to look more realistic. And I don't know what looks more realistic than a window than by actually making it look like a window. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a piece of acetate behind here because I'm going to create a background on the inside of the card. Let's go ahead and position that background now so that it's in the right place for this opening. And I'm just choosing a piece of designer series paper and here is where all the creative freedom comes in because you can use whatever you want. You're gonna be able to use stamps that you have and other designer series paper. This comes from the Artistry Blooms designer series paper. It is double-sided, wow, drastic difference, isn't it? And I love that about Stampin' Up! designer series papers is that there is a really very much a theme on one side and the other side is generic so that it can be used all year round. So it's really a great way for you to expound on your purchase. This is one of those products that I'm calling it that are on the chopping block. That means it's being retired after May 3rd. You're not going to be able to get it. So if you fall in love with it, head over to my shop over at lisastampstudio.com and pick it up now. I am looking to gravitate this to the top portion of this fold. And that'll make more sense in just a little bit. Now, while it's flat, before we get too far, I'm gonna go ahead and add my greeting just because it's nice and even. I'm skipping over to Melon Mambo. I'm gonna bring in a big pop of color. And from that same stamp set, I've pulled out a greeting. Let's go ahead and ink that up. And I'm gonna stamp that down here near the bottom. This says, sending sunshine for a beautiful birthday. And because we did the stamping off on the background here, you're gonna see that that greeting is actually still gonna be very predominant. All right, let's get that window in place. I've cut a piece of acetate, like I said. Now in my online store, we call them window sheets with Stampin' Up. Remember I told you there's gonna be that PDF tutorial with all those supplies. This is cut for those of you taking notes, two and a half by three and a quarter, but remember, I got all those cutting dimensions for you. Now there's a couple ways you're going to be able to adhere this. I'm gonna move that silicone craft sheet underneath there so you can see a little bit better. You can use glue dots, that's gonna work beautifully, or you can use adhesive. I purposely size this so that you'd have a margin to place your adhesive around it. And just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm gonna do a little bit of both because I always get lots of comments. Well, the adhesive didn't work because you used glue dots or the glue dots didn't work because you used adhesive. So we're gonna do a little both. Here's my glue dot here. I like to peel it back on the paper and I'm working in the corners. So I'm gonna do one here. And I'll do another one here. And if you're concerned about this area here, you absolutely can put another one there. 
and another one here. And then guess what? I'm going to stop because this is where now I'm going to use the adhesive. I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus. It is very, very strong. It comes out in little tiny tabs. It comes in the dispenser, which makes it easy to use. All you're gonna do is you're gonna run it in this area. Now I left about a quarter of an inch, which is probably a little bit less than this. So let me give you a tip. The silicone craft sheet is a wonderful work surface in your paper crafting area because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. So I'm able to actually divide the width of my adhesive, half on here, half off of here, and place it right where I want it. Now, the other thing that's great about this adhesive is because I said it comes out in tabs, I can actually run it back on top of itself. So I got a nice sticky edge there, and nothing is wasted. If your adhesive is different, the silicone craft sheet is going to ensure that this doesn't get any sticky on it. You are going to love that. All right, so let's go ahead and just leave that there so you can see better. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gravitate this so that the adhesive and or the glue dots, whatever you're using, are not going to show through the window. So manipulate it up and down and to the side. And then once you have it covered, we're going to go ahead and place that down here. Now look, now we've actually got a faux window. Let's go on and let's go ahead and fix this up while it's all flat and then we'll work on the tent base. I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment and you'll recall that I placed that die through the die cutting machine. Not only did it create that negative opening, it left us this. Now this needs to be adhered to here. And if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not a glue girl. So you know I'm gonna be brave tonight with you on the live stream by showing you some liquid glue. So I've got my go. I've got my glue right here, my multi-purpose liquid glue. This stuff is so strong, you need literally little tiny drops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move you in a little bit closer so that you can see better. And then what I'm going to do is take that cap off, and right here on my silicone craft sheet, I'm going to get that glue started. I have a tendency to squeeze too much, and because glue is going to spread, you want little tiny drops, and I mean little tiny. You don't need much, you don't need it in every single area, but you wanna make sure that you've got those little important spots tacked down. The other thing is glue is going to spread, like I just said. And please keep in mind when you're working with window sheets or acetate, there's nothing worse than having it spread and then ooze all over your window, right? Now, when this dries up here, it's gonna to turn to an opaque finish and I'll be able to rub that right off. This is going to get positioned right inside of here. You want to make sure that you're going to get it where you want it around the first try because remember, you don't want to smear that glue on that window acetate. See how this is starting to come together? Really, really pretty. The great thing, too, about liquid glue, I know a lot of you love it, is because you got a little bit of wiggle room, don't you? So I'm going to go ahead and just press that down and let that sit for just a moment. And I'm going to move that to the side. And now I'm going to bring in some scrap white cardstock. I've got that right here. We're gonna actually gussy up this window to make it really, really pretty. So I'm pulling out another piece from that die set and you'll see that here. These are the shutters. So that's gonna go right on top of here. And then I've got a piece of crumb cake cardstock that coordinates with that stamp background we just made, remember? And we are also going to die cut this. This is a ledge. Now you're gonna find in the other cards I'm gonna share with you, I have six more. You're gonna see me use this in a lot of different ways. So that's gonna go here. Now there's one other die, and I didn't take it out, but I'm gonna show it to you right here. It has four hinges right inside this one die. So it's gonna die cut four hinges at a time, and you're gonna die cut one of those as well. Again, to sp save space and save time, I did do that ahead of time for you. And let me just pull those pieces out. So I've got my two shutters here, and I have my shelf here, all right? Now let's start putting it together. Now recall that I said I had some hinges. Do you remember that? All right, so let me bring in that silicone craft sheet and let me show you the beauty of this tool. This is the take your pick tool. I absolutely love that putty tip. I have basal joint arthritis. It's hard for me to pick up little tiny things. That putty tip is gonna save me. There are interchangeable tips that come with this tool and I've attached the paper piercing tool attachment. This is the best $10 that you will ever spend, you will thank me. So just off camera, I have some of those little hinges right here, and you can see how small they are. And I'm not going to go ahead and put all four of them on. I've got some already done, but I absolutely want to teach you a couple trips, tricks 
about going ahead and attaching these on these smaller pieces. Because maybe you're like me and you have difficulty with dexterity. So I'm going to actually use this to my advantage. Now, a couple things about these hinges I want you to know, because I made this mistake when I first used them. They're going to curve shallow up. So you want the highest tip of the shutter at the top right. So this is going to be closest to the glass. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay that here on top of the silicone craft sheet. I'm going to go ahead and bring myself in a little bit more glue, and I'm going to make a little puddle up there in the, co in the corner. Do you see that? I am going to pick up my hinge, and what I'm going to do is very lightly tap it inside of here. I got a little glue and a little glue there on the other end. Oh, that's all you need. And then we're going to go ahead and place that right where we want it, and I'm using that other tip to kind of tap that in place. Done. Simple. You're going to do the exact same thing down here. I'm going to go ahead and do one more for you. For those of you that want to see it one more time, I'm making sure that that really pretty embossed side that comes with the die is facing up. Positioning on the second hinge is going to be important, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So you're going to see that I've separated these um, from the top and the bottom. So I've got one up here and one down here. And this glue dries very, very quickly. So let me go ahead and just set this off to the side for just a moment and let me bring in the other two that are dry that I did right before you join me. So we've got one here and we've got one here. When you go to place the hinges on the other shutter, mimic the direction that goes across horizontally so that it looks symmetrical. We're not carpenters, we're, we're pretending to be while we construct this window. Let's go ahead now and let's start adding some dimensionals to the back of these so we can make that window more predominant. Now I've got my full size dimensionals here. Oh look, see, I wrote right and left because I have made that mistake. So if you're making this at home, don't be afraid to label your pieces. No one's ever gonna know. And that is an important tip for you if you are making oodles of these because if you got a bunch of shutters laying around, it's really easy to turn them and have them going in the wrong direction. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is use that take your pick tool attachment. We're going to remove those paper backings one more time, and I'm going to bring in that card. This now, like I said, is going to go on the right side. The shallowest end is near the window. That's going to get attached right here near the edge. And now we're going to work on that left side, and we're going to take off that paper backing, and we're going to do the exact same thing here. But, oh, we're not ready because this is going to get really fun in just a few minutes. All right, great. Do you remember the ledge? Well, here comes the beauty of the ledge. We're gonna do the same thing. Let's flip that over. And this time I'm switching over to my mini dimensionals because those are a little bit smaller, pre-cut, ready to go, makes my life really easy. We're gonna add those right here. I am a big fan of making sure that my dimensionals are well balanced across my project. My mom is here, hi mom. She is a recipient of a lot of my cards and she tells me if those things are not balanced right. So. Thanks to mom, we are making sure that we've got those well balanced. And this is going to go right underneath here. So I'm just kind of centering it visually the best that I can. Now this in itself is pretty neat, but nobody likes an empty windowsill, right? All right, so here comes the beauty of this entire bundle of products. Let's go ahead and grab another piece of white cardstock. And now we're going to do some stamping. I am going to stamp a bouquet and a vase that's going to hold some flowers for that shelf. I'm gonna be using Cajun Craze for that pot. And the beauty of this is, oh, I love this. There are three different pot sizes in this stamp set, as well as the pitcher. Wait till you see these other cards. I'm gonna ink these up and I'm gonna stamp this right here on my scratch paper because of course there are dies for everything. So there is no work involved for you. I love the way this stamps. It looks almost textured, which makes it really, really easy to use. You don't have to worry about stamping off. Let's do some flowers next. Let's bring in some continuity with that Melon Mambo ink that we had used for the greeting. Now, there are two images that are going to work together. One is the flowers, one is the greenery. This is photopolymer. You're gonna notice that I've used this quite a bit in this Melon Mambo ink. That staining to the polymer does not affect the performance of the stamp. It just does leave a staining on it. So don't let that panic you. As long as you clean your stamp, you are good to go in any color of your choice. I prefer to stamp the flowers first, then the greenery. Now, before I do that, I wanna share something with you about the stamp set that you may not know. There is also another bouquet of flowers that are in here. 
it's this one. And it has different flowers that fits inside. I struggled with trying to figure out which flowers went in which greenery. Because obviously here on the cover, they're together. So let me show you what I did. Inside the stamp case, I took a Sharpie marker and on the plastic, I wrote A and A. So I knew these flowers went with these stems. And then I did B and B. And you can see that I've pulled them off. Those are the ones that we're using. So I know those two are together. Not only is that a great cheat for me, it's a great cheat for those of friends of mine that come over to stamp with me. So they're not going through the same thing I went through when I started to use it. So we're going to use the flowers first and we're going to ink those up and we are going to stamp those here. I'm cleaning my stamp just off camera. Did I miss that one? I think I did. Well, that just figures, right? Only because you're watching me. Let's go ahead and let's see if I can do that again. Let's stamp it here. Always two sides to a piece of cardstock, right? And now we're going to switch over to the greenery. And for that, I decided to use pear pizzazz. So let's go ahead and open that up. And then I'm going to bring in the greenery for that bouquet. So I'm going to go ahead and ink those as well. You know, oftentimes we want to gravitate to the center, don't we? Have you ever noticed that your ink pads are lighter in the center? Because that's always where we want to go. Don't be afraid to travel your ink pad. There's ink everywhere. And now what you're going to do, I'm trying not to get my head in your camera view, is you are going to gravitate over this. And you can see where the flowers are going to fit and you are going to stamp. And you're going to have perfect placement every single time. And like I said to you, there are dies for these. So you do not have to worry about fussy cutting. And even though I flip this over, I can die cut this one and I can die cut that one. And I do have those done for you ahead of time. And they are here. Let's go ahead and attach them. And if you're thinking, oh, no, that's going to be hard. <laughs> no, it's not because it's a glue dot. I love these things. They make your life so easy. Let's go ahead and add one right down here. Oops, I jumped right out of my hand. Right down here at the bottom center of your bouquet. And then pull. That's going to leave that glue dot here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this on my pot, just kind of like I'm planting it. And that's going to leave us this. Let's flip this over now, and we are going to add some dimensionals to the back side. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to actually going to cheat, and I'm going to give you a little tip. If you think you missed on your glue dot and you're afraid that it's wiggling too much, take another dimensional and double anchor that. So I'm anchoring over the pot and over those flowers to hold it in place. Listen, no one sees the back side, right? Card construction is a great thing from the back, <laughs> okay? So here we go. We're gonna position this right here on our windowsill. It's gonna be so darn cute. Next thing is to create the tent base, which is gonna take this regular card and make this into a fun fold. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer next, and I've got both my scoring and my cutting blade on it. I love the paper trimmer for this because you don't have to remove these. They navigate up and down out of the way. You are going to take a piece of cardstock that measures, I'm looking at my instructions, three by four and a quarter. And I'm gonna do some scoring. And it looks like I already did this one before, but we're gonna just improvise so you can see this. This is the four and a quarter inch side, and we are going to score there. The very first one is at three quarters of an inch and we're gonna score. Then we're gonna move this over to one and one half inch, and we are going to score. And then finally at two and a quarter, and we are going to score. I did come up with these tent measurements myself because I wanted the base to be broader on this card for you. Actually, what it's done is created four quadrants here. Pretty simple. Fold it in half. And then this is where I love that bone folder because I want a nice crisp crease on this because this is going to be a fun fold. These other two score lines are going to go up. So we call these mountain and valley folds. So a mountain fold goes up and a valley fold goes down. And then we're going to reinforce that with your bone folder. Let me go ahead and clear off my silicone craft sheet here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some adhesive so that we can add this to the inside of the card to expand it. You want to make sure that it looks like this when it goes into the card. If necessary, take your pencil and give yourself some cheat marks. Make life easy for you. So I know I want it this way. I am going to open it up and I'm going to put adhesive here. I'm going to take my Stampin' Seal Plus and I'm going to run that here. Remember, it's going this way. So that means my other one is going to go on the opposite side. 
and I'm going to run my stamp and seal here. Whoops, let me get that going. I'm at a weird angle in your camera view. Remember, I told you it won't stick to this, which is going to make doing two sides super easy. Here is the card. We are going to open that up to make it easy for your hand with the peak in the center. You're going to line this up at the very bottom of the cardstock, and you're going to work all the way across. And then you are simply going to close the card on top of itself. And then this is where the magic comes in. Bam, look at that. There's your tent fold. So it stands perfectly and you've got a beautiful view to the inside right through that window. So much fun. What would you put here? What would you put? Would you stamp a scene on the inside of your house or the outside of your house? But don't go away. Wait until you see these other six cards that all use this entire bundle of product. You are not going to believe what I came up with that are besides windows. Let me pull those out for you. These cards that I'm going to share with you next are all part of this month's online card making class. You're going to be able to make all six of these cards with me right from home. Look at this one. Do you see the beadboard that I created here on the bottom? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you tons of tips because you're going to get a step by step video that you can stamp right along with me from home. My monthly card class only requires a $50 product order and I send you the video and a comprehensive, very comprehensive 16 page PDF tutorial that's gonna go step by step for all the cutting dimensions and all the supplies. Now, three of my six cards are fun folds. This is one of them. So we've got one and then we've got two. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. So even if you are a fairly new paper crafter, I got you covered. All right, get ready. This is totally different. Do you see what I did with those shutters? I looked at that and I said, that can be a potting bench. So that's exactly what I did. I used the shelf pieces here and the potting bench area here from one of the panels and created a potting bench. Now, if you want your cards to look exactly like mine, you're gonna find a complete list of all the supplies I used over at lisastampstudio.com under the classes tab for card making class. This is card number four, and this is a fun fold as well. Look at that, isn't that sharp? And this is an easel card. So this will stand up on its own as well. And of course, there's room in there for you to sign or stamp another greeting. So that's card number four. Remember, you can use whatever you'd like. You do not have to order this bundle. I give you a ton of freedom when you do your card making class ordering with me. How about this one? It's not a window at all, is it? That video is chock full of tips for you. You are going to look at this bundle in an entirely different way. You're gonna see lots of little accoutrements here and I'm gonna give you tons of those tips in the video. They're also in the PDF tutorial. So whether you like to read or you like to watch, I've got you covered. Now here's the best part about card class. It's only available for four days. So it starts today, which is Wednesday, the 14th of April, and it's only going to last until Saturday, the 17th of April. You must use the exclusive card making class host code in order to be able to receive the video and the tutorial for this class. Now, I've got some interesting information to share with you about it, including that tutorial. Give me one second to turn that camera around for you. I would love to have you join me for this month's card making class. I spend a lot of time putting these cards together for you, giving you ideas you have not seen somewhere else. In addition to all the cutting supplies, step-by-step -step instructions, multiple pictures in the tutorial, you are also gonna get the physical tutorial. And I'm gonna give you a quick look at that here. This month's tutorial is 16 pages long. Yes, I said 16 pages because I don't miss a thing. You're gonna get pictures, you're gonna get step-by-step -step instructions. Now, if you're wondering, can I get just the tutorial? The answer is yes. If you head over to lisasstampstudio.com and under the classes tab, go to PDF tutorials, you'll be able to purchase this there. It does not include the video that is exclusive to those people that use the card making class host code to get the video and the class together. But for those of you that are outside of the country, or for those of you that perhaps are Stampin' Up! demonstrators, 
I know that you probably don't want to place an order or you can't place an order because of tax and tariff laws. I've got that available for you. I only charge $1 per page for these instructions. Also, there is one little caveat about the host code that I want to make sure that you know, because if you're like me, you're going to fall in love with it all. And if your order is $150 in product or more, do not use the card making class host code. That is the only exception. But you need to let me know that that size order was intended for this card making class. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing. Simply click contact me on my website and just send me a quick note so that we know we can get over the tutorial and the video to you so that you can go ahead and enjoy that for this month's card making class. Now I'm looking at my notes because I want to go over a couple other things with you before we go and then give you the date for the next live. When you're over on my website, if you're brand new there and you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to be able to sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. It's no frills, but I give you a tutorial there that's not shared on any of my other platforms and I would love to have you join us. In addition to that, you're going to find oodles of other tutorials in my library. There's lots of things to scroll for. So go over and take a look. Finally, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Would you do so? Click that little bell icon that's next to it and the word all. That will send you reminders, notifications, when I'm live right here on YouTube because I'm coming back with you on Monday. Looking at my calendar, it's April 19th already on Monday. It will be 8 p.m. Eastern time and you're not going to want to fit to miss that fun fold that I'm going to be sharing with you. Yeah, I'm a little excited already. So I hope that you'll mark your calendar to come back and join me. Please remember the replay is always available for you if you can't join us live. But do me a favor and share tonight's video with your friends that help us to keep content free right here on YouTube. Megan, thank you so much for all your hard work and interaction tonight with everyone. Thank you all for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you live with me on Monday. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye-bye.